welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, you guys. And today I have Jen with me. The reason why I want Jen Klein on is because she has a fascinating story. She got paid internships, believe it or not, all through college, and she just transferred to another job as we speak. And so, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually going back to school in the fall. And so, Jen is going to be my teacher this morning on my 30th birthday to teach me how to, how she did it. And maybe I can pull a couple tricks from her magic bag. How does that sound? And so, without further ado, I'm going to let Miss Jen Take it away. Well, thank you for the amazing introduction. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm so excited to learn that you're going back to school. That's really exciting, and hopefully I can help with uh, some tips for what to do when you get there. So I just wrote my first book. It's called An Intern's Guide to the Career World, and I had seven internships in college, so I'm here to inform you a little bit about how to get an internship and what the best tips and tricks are to stand out from the crowd. Well, isn't that wonderful? Now, so I'm actually going back to school online. My classes are online, but eventually I will be moving out to San Francisco, San Francisco California, where the Academy of Arts is, and so... I have a job right now that I'm happily employed right now, but I'm always looking for jobs and internships, especially remote work and remote freelance writing because I'm getting my degree in fashion journalism, so I hope. Right. And so for those who are um, freshmen going back to school in the fall, and they have already had the conversation with their parents. And the parents say, well, fast was wonderful. FAFSA, for those of you who don't know, is the United States financial aid. And fast was wonderful. We'll get you on FAFSA. We'll see if you can get loans. But you kind of have to pay for your housing and food. So, Jen, and that's where you come in. How do we start looking for internships and potentially paid internships? So I actually had all paid internships in college. I was really lucky in that aspect. But, yeah, I was definitely in that situation where I took out loans, but I still had to work all through college to be able to pay for it. So, I would say that the first step is you want to identify the field that you want to go into. And what I did was I knew I wanted to go into graphic design and marketing. So I started doing research. I started researching, um, especially on LinkedIn. Um, I would say first make a LinkedIn account, add your previous experience, even if it's not related to the field you want to go into. And then start researching on there. Look up people who are in the jobs that you want. I started looking at graphic designers and marketing associates and looking at what previous experience they had before they got to the role they're in now. And then I started looking at, you know, agencies and any place that would need marketing graphic design in the area where I was going to school or where you live. So that's the first step is just start doing your research, make a LinkedIn account, and start looking up what experience you need to get the job that you want. Yes, because I'm realizing that college students, I have a LinkedIn profile, oh, I actually have a couple of them, and um, I'm realizing that college students should use LinkedIn before they graduate college because it's all about networking. It's all about yes, who yes. you know and who you can refer to, and it's like, okay, I want to go into the field of journalism, let's start there. Do your research and ask people. Ask yes. people, do you have yes. opening at uh, at a news 
studio, for example, just to be a front desk person. It doesn't have to be behind the camera. It doesn't have to be um, doing CAD work in the graphic design field straight out of the shoot. It just has to get your foot in the door. Yes, and definitely another one of the things that I would suggest, too, is looking at what community groups um, are based in your community that are dealing with the field you want to go to. So I know that for marketing, I live in Baltimore, and we have the American Marketing Association. We have AIGA for graphic design. So start researching journalism community groups in whatever place you're in because a lot of the people who are part of these groups and local chapters are business owners or they work in a lot of the major businesses there. And the earlier that you can make connections with those people, that's another way to get your foot in the door for sure. Well, that's wonderful. Now, how do you feel about Facebook community groups? I know there's Facebook community groups. How do you feel about those? I would also definitely recommend those. Um, I'm in a couple of Facebook community groups, too, and I've actually gotten several jobs from from those. I'm in one, I think it's social media, social media jobs, and people from all over the country post jobs there, and sometimes they're long-term, sometimes they're short-term, sometimes they're paid, unpaid. I used a couple experiences that I found on those Facebook groups to start building my resume, so I did a one-day like volunteer social media um, at a conference, and I was able to put that on my resume that I did that, and they gave me, like, a recommendation. So I started making connections there, and the guy who found me for that actually just reached out to me last week and asked, oh, how are you doing? Like, is there anything I can help you with career-wise? So you want to start making those connections anywhere you can as soon as possible, especially in the college years. Oh, my God. So the guy that found you still remembers you and wants to help you again. Yeah, and the big thing that you want to remember with networking is you want to keep in touch with your contacts. I've had a lot of people that I've met through internships and through college and things, and I would say every couple months reach out to them and just say, oh, you know, maybe you see that they're working on a new project or maybe you see that they've just started with a new company or something take that time to ask for, like, a life update and say, oh, I saw you're doing something new. You know, what is it about? I'm interested in learning more about it. How are you doing? Like, making those simple connections is very genuine but also very key in this world. Well, it's all about the no like and trust factor. Now, Jen, what is your favorite book? It doesn't have to be a business book. It just has to be a book that you go back to time and time again. Um, I've recently always been going back to Girl Boss by Sophia Amoruso, which I've definitely recommended to a lot of people. Uh, Sophia is the founder of Nasty Gal, which is a huge online retailer, and she now owns a company called Girl Boss. But she wrote about her story with founding her company and running it, but also she put in so many helpful tips and tricks and ideas, and I've always been going back to that for inspiration for probably the last six or seven months. And another book that I really like as well that I've given as a gift to many people is actually a book specifically on internships. It's by Lauren Berger, and it's called All Work, No Pay. And she, when you're first starting out doing internships or even looking for an entry-level job, has so many great tips and helpful advice in there. So I've referenced that a lot over the last five or six years. And I presume those two books could be found on Amazon and Audible and yes. maybe yes. Kindle? Yes. So they, those um, two books. I believe they're could... available on all three. Okay. So people could um, go uh, look up those two books, especially Go Boss on Amazon. So, Jen, if you had to be educated by anyone inside or outside your field, who would it be and why? Well, definitely the two I just mentioned, Sophia Amoruso and Lauren Berger, who I idolize them. 
They, I think, are so smart, and I love the way that they carry themselves, but they're also good businesswomen. Um, and aside from them, Elizabeth Chambers Hammer, who owns Bird Bakery in San Antonio, and she is a journalist, and I just really like the way that she has um, navigated her career, and I like the way she carries herself. I really look up to women who have such a strong, like, sense of self and who really are confident in their businesses and their abilities. So that's who I'm very magnet, like, force towards, for sure. Yeah. And what has been your greatest entrepreneurial success in all of this? Well, right now I'm in the process of forming my own company, and we're at the tail end of it. The legal stuff just takes a long time. So when I first started interning back in college five years ago, um, I never thought that I was going to, like, own a business. I never thought I would pursue anything. I just thought I would get right into a job and start working. So I think that through all of my experiences, I've really gained a lot of confidence in myself and my abilities And I definitely owe all of that to all my jobs and all my internships. So for sure, um, I just wrote my first book, which should be available in August. And I'm definitely, that's the number one thing. I never thought that I would do that. So that's been a huge achievement. Yeah, writing the book, which should be available in August. That's a huge achievement in itself. And are you self-publishing that book? Or are you traditional publishing? Um, I decided to self-publish that, so yeah, I went back. Yep, out. more creative control. More <laughs> yeah, creative for sure. control. Big sign, big sign, Jen. You and I are not giving up on creative control of the books. No, and we're no, not. <laughs> no, we worked too hard on these books, and these books are babies. So. Good for you, and I presume that your book will be found on Amazon in August. Yeah, we're working on that right now with Amazon. Well, good. And are you using, if you don't mind me asking, are you using Create Space? Um, No, I actually created it on my own in another program, but I think we're moving it over to that. Well, good, because... For those of you who don't know what Create Space is, Create Space is Amazon's self publisher. Although they create space books maybe in Whole Foods eventually because Amazon just bought Whole Foods. So you never know what Amazon is doing with their books. And so, Jen, where can people find you and where can people get a hold of you and reach out to you and shoot you an email if they're listening to this and they're in college and they have a disability and they're tickled their fancy and they say, help me find an internship or help me get a lead to find an internship. Where can people find you? Yeah, absolutely. So I am definitely available to help anyone who needs it. You can find me in a couple different places. So my email is jencrim at gmail.com, and it's J-E-N-N-C-R-I-M at gmail. So if you want to send me an email, that's where you can find me. Um, On social media, I have a Twitter. It's at J-E-N-N-C-R-I-M. Jen Krim, and I'm also the same handle on Instagram, so once again, at Jen Krim. I do have a website, which is www.jennifercrim.com, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-C-R-I-M.com, and my brand new website, which is launching this week, uh, should be tomorrow, actually, (laughs) is called thecareerworld.com, and that's where I'll be sharing all of my advice for internships and jobs and general career things, and that's www.thecareerworld.com. And we will have all of Jen's information in the show notes, you guys. Jen, it was wonderful getting some insights from you, but before I let you... Let off to give more people 
more help, you can ask me two to four questions, and then we'll close out the show. Okay, so my first question that I want to ask you is what is the biggest thing you're hoping to achieve in your 30s now that you're going into them? Oh, my God. What is the <laughs> biggest thing that I'm hoping to achieve in my 30s? That is a little bit of a question. It well, is. Two, two uh, things. I'm hoping to get on the New York Times bestseller list with one of my books. I have written soon to be nine books and over the course of uh, my life. And so I'm hoping to make it to the New York Times bestseller list, and that will obviously help my career and help my freelance writing and help just me raise awareness about cerebral palsy. My second um, goal is to get 700 downloads per episode when I launch a new episode on my podcast, I am hoping to see that in my 30s. I have tried to see that in my 20s. Well, obviously, that's in the book. So my goal is just to keep spreading awareness and just to keep inspiring people to achieve their dreams. And excuse my language, but it is my podcast, so I'll say this. Kick ass and achieve <laughs> their dreams in whatever they want to do. Well, I think that's a very admirable goal for sure. So I think you have two good ones to reach for in this new decade. Uh, my last question is what is your definition of success? Oh, my definition of success is to um, interview rock stars like you who have got it all, and have got the able-bodied thing down pat, but have got it all and have seemed to made it in life. I mean, I get to interview rock stars like you. How lucky am I? <laughs> we are also lucky that we get to inter be interviewed by you, for sure. Well, yeah. Well, as I said, thank you, Jen, for making the time this morning, and you guys, this may roll out on Monday. It's not Wednesday, and so you never know what I'll decide to do with this podcast. But it will definitely roll out next week because I am off to go celebrate my birthday and spend it with people that love me and care about me. And even though my fans love me and care about me. I think I'm going to take a little me time today and um, spend it with people that love me and care about me. But this podcast has been sponsored by Kidder, K-I-T-T-E-R, and Kidder is a Twitter app. They, they or you can compose the tweet, but what's cool about them is they um, put the trending hashtags with your tweet. So um, let's say you write a tweet about entrepreneurship, they will put the trending hashtag with it. So people that click on that hashtag get to see your tweet and possibly retweet it and like it and love it and all that good stuff. So again, I thank Jen for coming on my podcast and you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks to you guys.